there. <laughs> oh. oh, I see we're recording. Okay. Well, welcome everyone to our, our first annual Zoom Rockstar Book Club discussion. <laughs> and I'm Linda D'Onofrio. So thanks for everyone for joining us today. And our special guest, of course, is Donette Thayer. Woo! So what I thought we would do is I would just start by kind of introducing myself and how we came to form this book club. And then if each one of you would just go around the room and introduce yourselves and just tell us a little about yourselves and how you came to be involved in this book club, whether it was about the book, something quite peculiar or Donette or how you came to be. And then we'll all get to know everyone. And then if Donette would give us an update on herself and what she's been doing lately, and then we can go into some questions about the book. So how does that sound? So I'm just going to start by saying I got into reading this book because somehow on Facebook, I became friends, well, Facebook friends with Steve Kilby through someone else that was connected to him because I knew the song um, Under the Milky Way. And I was like, oh, my God, I love that song. So I connected to him and then I ordered his book, which was called um, Something Certainty, the other book by uh, Mr. Laurie, that book. I messaged him. I messaged Steve through Facebook and was commenting on some of the things that I read in the book. And I said, you know what I really like about this book? It's a lot about your music and the albums and all that. And that's great. But who is this girl, Donette Thayer? She jumped out of the pages at me. The love for her was so real. Like that was a side of his personality that I just thought, wow, he really loves this girl. He's crazy about this girl. And she's from a whole other world, from a whole other country. He's already a rock star. And he meets her and he's clearly captivated by her. So he wrote back being the consummate professional and said, well, if you like that, you better buy my other book because there's more about Donette in the book that I wrote myself. And he said, it's a lot more soul bearing. So that being said, immediately I started on the arduous task of ordering books from Australia. So as my friends here can justify, we thought well, we'll make up a book club all about this book and we're going to discuss Donette. So that's how our book club started. It was a pandemic. We thought she's so cool. I like, I'll, I'll tell you why I thought everything about her was so cool. And we thought, well, order these books. So I find out from Steve, I have to order them directly from his website. And it was like five, six weeks till they made their way from Australia. They, they were, they're autographed. They're very cool, not to any of our names, but they're all just like crazy things like love, love, love and read it and weep and just crazy, <laughs> crazy things. But I was so excited when they came. And so, of course, we formed this book club to discuss it. And then I decided maybe I'll just reach out to Donette and see if she's not offended if I tell her how like amazing I think she is and awesome. And she was so sweet and agreed to join us. But I read the book. And so first of all, the first thing that jumped out is that he said he named his collaboration with Donette Hex because she had put a hex on him. And I thought, this is a woman after my own heart. <laughs> how did this woman find this rock star, connect with him. And of course he's in love with her immediately as soon as he meets her. And that was really the basis of why we formed this whole book club is to find out her secrets. How did she do it? And find out more about her. Cause we just thought, she, I think she's amazing. So that's me. I'm going to hand the mic over to Karen. I'm Karen John. I got Linda called me and she's like, you've got to read these, this book. And I'm a, gra I'm a grandma trying to function with Zoom for the first time, preschool, and I'm looking for things to do. And so the book finally came and we were like, we're doing this, we're doing this. We got some more friends and it's very exciting. You, it, just intriguing. It's He's intriguing. You're intriguing. So we're glad you could come. Mary? <laughs> what did I just oh, do? No. Hold on a second. <laughs> There we are. All right. I, I had to mute myself, but I did something. Yeah. So, I mean, I've known Linda since I was, you know, kindergarten and um, she always, you know, gets me involved with some fun activities. So when she said about this book and, and, you know, I had heard of the church and I was excited to read it and meet Donette. So that's kind of how I got involved. And uh, again, it was quarantine. We were trying to read and, and make connections and, you know, do something kind of different and fun. And I like to sing, but I would never have the guts uh, to do like what you did. And I would love to hear your secret with that, how you call the nerves. So, Hi, I'm Barb Waltman, and I'm a friend of Linda's. And we met at the gym. And how long have we been friends? Five years, maybe, you think? Oh, like that. Five years. And so, yeah, she told me about the book and being a drummer in a band. Oh, yay. <laughs> it kind of caught my attention. 
a book about a rock star and a band. So um, yeah, so that's how I was like, so I'll read the book and enjoy joining in the club. So, and I like to read. So I'm in another book club too. So, but we haven't done anything actually because of the pandemic because we usually meet in person and we've never <laughs> even thought about doing a Zoom book club. So this is kind of cool. My first experience in a Zoom book club. <laughs> cool. Ashley? Um, so my name's Ashley. I met Linda last summer um, at the gym when I started working there. Um, and every night she would come in, Ash, you're not going to believe what Steve said. You're not going to believe this. I've been messing with this guy, Steve. I'm like, all right, like, who is this guy? Like, what's it, like, what's up? What, what's the deal here? And she would just come in every night. Okay. I have an update about it. You have to read this book. I'm like, oh, okay. Like what, what is it about? And you're like, and she just told me, Ash, you have to read it. Like, it's a really good read. You'll really like it. I'm like, okay. So I actually downloaded it on my Kindle because I'm a big, big reader. So I was like, all right, I'll just download it. I'll give it a shot. And um, so I read it and I was like in captured with this book. Like I'm, first like couple pages, I'm texting Linda. Oh my gosh, I got to, I got to this part. You're not gonna believe it. <laughs> I got to this part, Linda. And you're like, keep going, keep going. So I finally got to the part with Donette and I'm like, oh my gosh, I actually understand like everything that you've been talking about and coming into the gym, like, I actually understand it now. But I really enjoyed the book. Um, it was a good read. I finally finished it in like two days. <laughs> Not gonna lie, it was good. Yeah. And you didn't. And didn't you download Donette's music and yeah, Steve's music? Yeah, I have it all on Apple? my phone. And I, I probably listen between Hex and the Church, like on my way to work, every day. <laughs> it's on <Yay>. replay. <laughs> Aw, thanks, Ashley. Randy, welcome. Hey, good to be here. Tell us about yourselves. Thanks for coming. All right, thank you. Yeah, I'm Randy Lamasters. I'm from Pittsburgh, PA. Um, my first memory of life was hearing the Beatles. This was back in the mid 60s or so. So the Beatles are my favorite band of all time, but my number two favorite band is the church. Uh, I've wow. seen the church play live over 40 times. Uh, have spent time with uh, all the guys in the band, had a real memorable experience in the 90s with them in Toronto. Uh, we went uh, out to dinner before the show and then me and some friends hung out afterwards and they were kind of stranded. They couldn't get a ride to the airport. And we finally got a taxi cab to come. And one of my neatest rock and roll memories is they all got in the taxi cab and as it's pulling away, they all turned around and they're waving like, yeah, thanks for getting us the ride. So, and, but anyway. Yeah, music is music is my soul. So uh, I've known of Donette and her music since the 80s. Uh, I used to have a radio show, played uh, Game Theory on the radio, played Hex on the radio, obviously played Church on the radio all the time. So uh, we've known each other, Donette and I, just uh, through Facebook, writing each other over the years. And so it's really neat to be here tonight uh, face to face. Yeah, finally get to see you face to face, Randy. Yeah, it's wonderful. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks. How about Nick? We see his name. Are you here, Nick? <laughs> oh, I think I think he's trying to, to talk. Can you hear me? I can, can hear you. We can hear you. We can't see you, but we can hear you. Yeah, I don't. I don't know why my um the video is not coming up. Maybe because my iPhone is kind of old. I don't know. Maybe it's not. I don't know why I don't have that, but you but you can hear me okay though, because I can yes. see you all. Yeah, yeah. I, I, actually, I can only see you when I stop speaking and I go start scrolling through. I don't know, but um, yes, I'm Nick and I'm in San Francisco, and um, can you still hear me okay? We can. And I'm just I'm leaning in. in. I'm <laughs> leaning in too. Okay. Um. Yeah. So I I first I read um. Steve's book right when it came out. I, I forgot where I saw somewhere on social media and I ordered it all the way from Australia because um, I've been a, a fan of the church for many years and I've read a lot of rock biographies. It was one of my favorite and, they, and it was, again, it was equally great because I've been such a fan of the church over the years. And being a musician here in the Bay Area, I've, I've crossed paths a few times over the years with some of the game theory folks. Um, I've met Scott Miller a couple times just in passing at shows. He was always very friendly. He would just say hello and smile. He was very cool. And 
Um, I also, I've forgotten his name, but I know the, um, the drummer from Loud Family kind of well. What was his name, Dunnett? Joe Becker? <laughs> yes, yes. Um, and his friend Bradley, they play in a band together called oh. the Bottom Blackbirds out here. Yeah, they're great, aren't they? Yeah, they're really great. I've, I've actually, I did a tour with the Blackbirds sitting in on drums oh. like 10 years ago. And um, also he, uh, he drums in a David Bowie tribute band that I've sat in like a couple times. Um, I've met Steve just like at Amoeba, uh, Steve Kilby. Uh, they've done some performances at Amoeba Records over the years and I've had him sign a few things and, and he was very cool. So yeah, I'm just a fan going back to the 80s and uh, really enjoyed the book. And um, I do have somewhere on CD stored hex oh, wow. albums, although most of the stuff is on YouTube now, so you can kind of. So yeah, we should all see. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. And now, Donette, please update us on yourself and your awesomeness. <laughs> <laughs> well, my. My most important thing is meeting with you guys today. That's, I've been looking forward to that for a long time now. And I'm really happy that you uh, took the time and energy to reach out to me and, uh, and, and do this. It's just so nice. And uh, I, I had read the book before, but I read it again just to get ready for the thing. And I was really impressed with how much stuff he was able to remember from when he was very young. Did you guys notice that? I mean, geez. Uh, playing pool and uh, going all around to these different places and stuff when he was just very young. I don't remember that much of my youth. That was really impressive to me. Uh, some of those stories I'd heard before, I do have a few clarifications that I wanna make eventually, but uh, maybe we'll get to that eventually. <laughs> Aww. So do you, do you want to give us any update um, or do you want us to any more about your life right now? Or do you want us to just oh, start sure. with some questions? Yeah. Or Recently, um, well, maybe like five or six years ago, I got a master's degree in conservation biology, lake surgeon, and that was really fun. Um, they, uh, they overwinter and, you know, they, they're potamodromous. Uh, that means they stay in the river all the time and they never go out to the sea like some other sturgeon. And then, uh, so, but they look for a place like the sea to overwinter. So they look for a great big deep pool, but they can never really overwinter because the water is always flowing unlike the sea. So that was interesting. And then um, my husband, John and I have a vineyard that uh, was abandoned and we're, we're, um, rehabilitating it and starting to make wines from uh, certain like varietals um, that are all grown in the same way so that we can tell the difference between each type of grape. So that's exciting. And you know, uh, what else? I live in Canada now and <laughs> I'm afraid to go back to the States. We got three inches of snow yesterday and- Wow. <laughs> Are the borders open? Can you come back to the States? Or? Yeah, you can go if there's like, it has to be uh, like, you have to have a good reason to go, which is like, I live there or I'm, you know, going for a job or something. You can't just go across to shop, but um, you know, pretty much any reason you give them will be okay with them. It's, it's Canada, they're like, all right, come on in, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty easy going. Okay, cool. Um, so do, do we want to just start with asking some questions? I know we all submitted some, well, most of us submitted questions and we sent them over to Donette already so she'd have a little bit of a head start. Um, do we want to kind of randomly each, like we each ask a question and go around the room a little bit? How does that sound? That sounds great. Okay. Okay. Um, so, so, okay, so one of the things about the book that I really liked, well, I liked your whole relationship with Steve and I thought it showed a really like vulnerable, raw side of him. And I have to say that when he talked about his relationship with you, he commented like when he was on tour 
and you were working at a water treatment <laughs> facility and he would wait till you were on your lunch break so he could call you and talk on the phone like that was like really cute like to think that he was a big star and he was on tour and he was waiting for your lunch break I mean you had to be touched by that that's so cute um and then especially when you went you took him home for Christmas to Colorado to your mom's house was it Colorado and he wrote in there that it was like one of the best Christmases he had ever had and he had such a great time with your family so like for some of us who are women we thought wow that's kind of like a fairy tale dream come true you bring this rock star home and your mom is like you know getting along with him and I think he said he went on walks with your mother in the morning and he had such a great time so now that you have children of your own and you're a mom and you have daughters, so if one of your daughters were to come home with um, saying, oh, I'm, I'm in love with this, or I, you know, I'm involved with this guy and he's a rock star or a singer or he's some sort of really artistic person and you would sort of see kind of a similar relationship, do you feel like you would respond the same way that your mom did and be very friendly to him and invite him in and be very cool or do you feel like you would have to put some of your own thoughts of what had happened in your own relationship into advice for her? Yeah, I, I think that's such a great question, Linda. That gave me a lot of, a lot of thinking to do. And um, my daughter, who is my clone, and I'm the clone of my mother. So I know exactly what I would do. I would do just what my mother did. And, and because I, I know that I wouldn't pay attention to me anyway, so uh, <laughs> whatever, whatever I would tell me to do, I would just ignore it and do whatever I wanted anyway. So why why do that? But but I might I might tell my daughter, you know, um, you're probably gonna get some grief for this from people who are like Scott Miller fans and blame you for breaking up the band and you know. Uh, that's gonna happen anyway. So they'll figure out some reason. I mean, you know, there's always some reason to, to be mad at people. And they're just, I think people should just go for, go for it. And my daughter, I would suggest, you know, be cautious, but go for it and, and you know, live your dream. Oh, I love, I love that advice. Karen, do you want to ask a question? Well, I, I have to tell you that in the beginning of the book, in his younger years, as soon as I read this, I called Linda and I was like, I've got to find out the big bean sandwich <laughs> recipe because I was just so intrigued. Like this, this mother is luring her rock star son home with these big bean sandwiches. Just crazy. But that was that was my fun part but I was <laughs> curious like looking back now did you could you see the the amount of addiction that was there for Steve like did that affect your relationship was it did you just go with the flow because it was that time you know the 80s and all was just there well uh he he always really liked pot he smoked a lot of pot always and uh, you know i think it helped his creative process so i knew that that was something that enjoyed. but that you know i don't know if that's such a big deal especially now we've we've really come to accept marijuana as part of our our culture um but then uh the the addictive personality i kind of didn't see that coming it was it, it was a surprise to me because when i met him uh, he meditated once a day and, um, you know, basically when he was uh, needing something, he would walk. He would enjoy taking walks and um, his, he's a bit obsessive and I can, I can recognize that because I have that too, that kind of aspect of my personality, but um, that should have, should have clued me in, but it didn't. And uh but I did not know, I did not expect him to, to really go for the heroin like he did. That terrible. Mary, Barbie, any questions? No. 
I'm doing it. Question. We have, there's a few questions. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I, I like this one question that Linda had posed here. Um, suppose Steve ever asked you to record with him again, would you consider it? Um, I would, yeah. You know, a lot of people have brought that up over the years and it never has happened. And I, I think that it's because the hex uh, records represent almost as much uh, a sort of a, a crystallization of a time and place and a relationship that is sort of sacrosanct at this point for both me and Steve. So I, I just, I really don't expect another hex record ever, but uh, if for some reason it, it is a possibility, I'm always ready to play anytime with anybody, you know. The, the second album that you did with him, um, that had good reviews as well. I did a lot more work on that one uh, than I did on the first one, simply because we had a little bit more time, or we had less time actually to put into that. And so, but it was time that we both had. And I think I just did more stuff on it than, than Steve. There's a song on that record that was actually the first song that Steve ever played for me. Um, it's called Centaur. And um, it didn't get on the first record, but it got on the second record. And, um, I'll have to look that one up. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, Barbie, do you have anything or should we go to Ashley? Go ahead, um, Ashley. I have to put my glasses on. <laughs> Since we're talking about um, possibly like how we, uh, going back to Hex, how do you think like Hex and being with Steve and recording with Steve changed you over those years while being with him and recording? Yeah. Uh, I learned a lot from Steve about uh, taking risks, mainly in the studio, but also in life, and really being open to kind of the 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 accidents that happen, and and then welcoming them into your life. Like in uh, the song Elizabeth Green, um, there was a period where. There, were a bunch of ambient noises that Steve was doing. And then he just decided at some point to take a whole bunch of percussion instruments and, and drop them. And I didn't know he'd done that. And so here comes this big sort of explosion of sound on the track. And it sort of woke me up and I started singing this different melody. And uh, you can kind of hear the whole holding of events right in that song. And, you know, it was. I'm not much of an improviser, but that was so close as close as I've ever come to improvising in the studio. And he forced me to do that a lot. He knew that was not a comfort zone of mine. So he made me do it. And, and uh, I, I still am grateful to him for doing that. Uh, Randy, do you have any questions? Oh yeah, sure he do. Does. He sure does. <laughs> yeah, then that I'm interested, okay. After Hex, I don't know that I've ever heard you sing or play since then. Well, um, I released Chaos and Wonder, and we did that, play that's, that's true. Yeah. I, I guess I should go a little bit later. Like, I, I, were you on the, the Game Theory record that was put together a couple a couple years ago? I, I did participate in that. Yeah. Yes. And, 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 and what was that like? Well, you know, it was one of those uh, things that everybody did remotely, so... Um, I, I sat in my house and wrote my parts, and then I went into a studio and recorded them and mailed them. To the, I, I guess that was the, um, Posey's guy. I don't remember his name escaping me, but um, Ken Stringfellow. That's right. Thank you. Sure. He did a fantastic job. He and Christine both. Had, uh, you know, it was a really nice tribute to Scott, and the music was very Scott-like. Uh, very much in keeping with all of that, which has always been brilliant. But, uh, you know, they they used some of it and didn't, you know, it was, it, there was a lot of input on that. And I think that they put it all together very tastefully. So you can't have everything all the time. I, I think it turned out really well. 
Can is there any, is there any chance you're gonna do uh, any any anything new solo project part of a band anything like that? I play music all the time. My yeah. husband and I and some of our friends. Um, we've been thinking about just you know recording some of our favorite songs for the heck of it, but I don't have anything uh, you know big any kind of big release type yeah. stuff. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the great things about where we are right now in, in this time period is the whole, the whole band camp phenomena. Right. You can just record at home on your Mac or whatever and put it up on Bandcamp and, you know, ask people to pay what they want. You know, you can yeah. say, okay, I'd like $5 for this record, but you can pay more if you want or less if you don't have enough. I just think it's a great way to be sharing uh, oh the, yeah, and there's times. so much interesting music too. I was watching this polyphonic girl group from Georgia, and they sing these Georgian folk songs while walking around with donkeys and stuff. And it's just wow. fantastic. I love it. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. But awesome. Uh, Nick, do you have any questions? Yes, I, I have a few actually. Can you hear me again? But. Yep, we can hear you. Cool. Um, yeah, I guess my I guess my first question is um, because you were around Steve around I think around the time when they were doing Starfish and then Cold Afternoon Fix. Did he talk to you much during that time about how the recording was going? Or um, I mean, he, he talks about it quite a bit in the book, and that that it was kind of interesting to be working with these producers that normally you know, work with Jackson Brown and Warren Zevon, other LA guys to be working with these Austri uh, alternative musicians from Australia. But did he talk much during those times about how the recording was going? Um, when I visited him in uh, LA during the recording of uh, Starfish and conversed with him a little bit at that time, he, he mentioned that it, you know, seemed to be going pretty well. And I think that they were just really happy to be working uh, on a record with a big label and, and uh, these big name producers. So nobody complained too much about it, not to me anyway. But then during Gold Afternoon Fix, there were a lot of, I was there more often for one thing and um, Grace. I, I was able to go and visit the studio sometimes. They had a great, really super old pinball machine. I like to go down there and play pinball. But um, yeah, there were some issues, but you know, they were doing their best. It was really high stakes after uh, Under the Milky Way and, and uh, it was a nerve wracking time. So it was, it, you know, it was tough for them. Yeah, he, he, he talks quite a bit in the book about the fact that that's right around, well, actually the tour, I guess, before was when the drummer, Richard Plug kind of started checking out. And by yeah. the time the time they got to doing Gold Afternoon Fix, he basically had to make drum tracks out of nothing, just take samples of him or use drum machines. And uh, just as much as I like that album, just in general, it seems Steve really is pretty dismissive of Gold Afternoon Fix and just doesn't really I think there's a lot of great songs on it, but maybe it's just the fact that it's the memory of making that album is tied so much into the songs that he doesn't think quite as much because, um, again, I think it is a pretty, I still like it. I mean, I mean, I like most yeah. of the church, but that seems to be a, I still like that one quite a bit. Um, and also, I, I, I think I've, I forgot where I've seen it before, but I think you've said before that Starfish was the nickname he gave you, is that correct? Well, he wrote me a postcard saying that uh, he hoped I'd become a star, or at least a starfish. And then mm -hmm. after that, he wrote <laughs> starfish, the starfish. So, you know, he also said that that was Richard Plug was the starfish at some point. So, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure it was me because you know, it was like more than one time he referred to me as Starfish. And I was shocked when I saw the name of the album. Um, you know. <laughs> that was yeah, because in, in the book, 
he glosses over that a little bit and just he says something effective. Well, I just gave this name to the record company and they kind of fought me on it and it meant nothing and everything all at the same time. And in the end, I won and that's what we called it. So, yeah, he, uh, yeah, he, he wasn't very specific because I, I remember reading what you had said about it. And it I mean, that totally it does seem like it was you. But for whatever reason, because um, I think he says something like that you were always kind of teasing him a bit and like, you know, you should be a big rock star and act like one or something. And <laughs> you thought that it was a good, you know, there's nothing wrong with, you know, trying to, you know, kind of be a star or whatnot. And then, then you, I, I remember reading about the postcard where he called you a starfish. So, okay. Um, and did you ever, did you ever actually live in San Francisco back in the day? Or yeah, you always I sure did. I lived on Golden Gate Boulevard, and I lived in the Tenderloin. Believe it or not, that was so have I. <laughs> that was interesting. And uh, I lived uh, in Pacific Heights too. Scott Miller and I lived there together. Oh, yeah. It, it seemed like I mean San Francisco was so much more kind of wide open and more affordable back in the '80s when you were. There were, there were a lot more venues and, and I mean, just like, you know, as you know, the way the Bay Area is now, the, the prices are ridiculous. Oh, I know. I, when I go back there now, I don't even recognize it. I tried to find some of the old places where I used to live and I couldn't even recognize the neighborhoods. Yeah, yeah, because my, my rehearsal space is actually into Tenderloin. So I'm, I'm down there like about five or six days a week. And I live out by Ocean Beach, actually. I'm like 20th and Fulton. So I'm um, I'm not downtown anymore, but yeah, it, it seemed, I mean, I didn't get out here until the, the mid nineties, but it seemed like SF was just pretty, pretty wide open back then as far as venues and, and so, um, I guess my last question right now was, do you, do you still have any contact with Steve? On and off. Yeah. I still talk to him. You know, it's, it's not, uh, something that I do often, but if there's some reason that I need to talk to him, I, I will email him or message him or something. Cool. Excellent. Lloyd, do you have any questions? I think Lloyd <laughs> might be muted. Oh, oh no. Not. Oh. Lloyd, were you muted? <laughs> I, yes, Come join us, Lloyd. I'm muting because I have small children. <laughs> oh, that's okay. We're in a like, restaurant. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm like lurking, like I'm hiding because they keep, <laughs> they keep being like, who are all Maybe these Maybe they women? have a question too. Well, my oldest is like, who are all these women that you're talking to as my wife is like out, <laughs> and, you know, I'm like, well, it's a long story. So <laughs> um, it's allegedly a book club. Go on. <laughs> Oh, I don't even know. Oh, there we go. Okay. They're outside oh. now. No, hi. Okay. Thanks for the Welcome, Lloyd. Hey, Thanks Donna. for coming. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, I just, no, I just wanted to come on and just listen. Um, I was a huge fan of, of, uh, of your band. And then, of course, uh, Hex was, those were just fantastic records. And so, and I still love those a lot. Um, and then... Yeah, just, uh, you know, I've only heard any, everything that I've ever heard is always from Steve or everybody else, because I don't think I've ever spoken with you, though. I think we're friends on Facebook, but, um, but I've, I've worked with the band for, I don't know, since 98 with Hologram. Uh, it was when I started working with them and, um, and still... <laughs> Lots of ups, way more downs, but it's been good. But I, it's nice to meet you. Um, nice to meet you. Across Thanks for the video us. screen, so. Well, I have a couple more questions. Um, so, Donette, you started out with a degree in chemistry. It's epidemiology, you, actually. Oh, epidemiology, okay. So Which is interesting to have right now. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Had, so was it a situation where you wanted to be a singer, you wanted to be a rock star, but I mean, obviously you were going to college because you would have the ability to have a job and fall back on it. But were you always kind of hoping to be a rock star and a singer and you just ended up going to college at the same time? I was just curious about that. Um, yeah, that's an interesting question, Linda. I, I did always want to be um, a rock and roll musician 
And, you know, uh, of course, I think everybody wants to have some certain amount of fame. It's a, sort of a, a way to cheat death. I mean, a lot of you guys work in end of life type careers. So you know how you want to have a legacy. So that's part of it. And this is back when the monkeys were like on TV and stuff. I'm sure that there are a lot of people who uh, found that attractive and I was one of them. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, but I never really thought that it was at all a possibility that I would play in a band. And then uh, I moved to Davis where um, the bands were just, and, and it was during that time when people were putting out records themselves and it was this great openness and sense of possibility. And so I just decided to go ahead and try. Why not, you know, and see how well I could do. Plus somebody, a friend of mine bought a bass for $20 and gave it to me and everybody always needs a bass player. So, <laughs> so I played. Uh -huh. oh, that's awesome. And then the other issue about having the uh, science degree and playing in a band is that it's this, interesting balance you know i've got all of this really right brain stuff going on in the one and then left brain in the other and and i could go from one to the other and be satisfied with that so it wasn't like i was this tedious uh science thing or this frustrating music thing it was like i could i could have both and, and that would make me happy Aww. I have another question, if I can. Uh, what is your favorite? What is your personally, personally, your favorite church song? Oh, I like Bel Air. And uh, that's really my favorite one. It was like one of his first that he ever wrote too, which I, I find interesting. But um, the unguarded moment was the one that I first saw, you know, that woke me up to the church. So... Mm -hmm. That was, uh, that has to be up there too in my top ones. Almost With You is so great because of that lead that Peter does, that amazing lead. And uh, you took, if you've ever seen them do that live, then, you know, you, you, it blew me away. I saw it dozens of times and uh, that, them do that song live and it blew me away every single time. So. <laughs> Well, I remember reading and saying which one is my uh, favorite. There are so many. And I remember reading in the book that Steve says that you're in the video for um, reptile. reptile. And I keep watching that video, trying to find oh, you. Everyone's in white. I'm not, you're not in it. You're not in it. <laughs> I'm not. Why does really? he say you're in it, jumping up and down? There's the somebody that head. looks like me that's in it, but that's not me. <laughs> 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 well, there's an inconsistency. Oh, wow. Are any of those songs written about you, do you think? I don't know. Um, Scott Miller wrote a bunch of songs about me. That I know because he told me. But uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if Steve ever wrote anything, anything specifically for anyone. He, he's so stream of consciousness that I think that he just takes it all in. And I'm, I'm probably in there a little bit in some, in some songs, but it's not all about me. Uh. <laughs> I, I thought I saw him mention somewhere that Louisiana was about. You. Oh, you're right. Yeah, it was about our time there. And he did tell me that um, unsubstantiated is about me too. Yes, uh. that's right. I forgot about that. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I forgot where I saw that. So. Yeah, yeah, did say that. That's one of the only times. When we were in Louisiana, um, he, he doesn't realize this, but the reason that he was so attracted to New Orleans is because it really looked a lot like Sydney. When I went to Sydney, I was like, well, no wonder he liked uh, New Orleans. It really looks like it looks like this city here where he lived, the part of Sydney anyway, where he lived, it looked a lot like New Orleans. It had that really, uh, humid, um, soft air by the sea type of feel too. And um, 
So I think that he may not have realized he, he was just homesick and enjoying being there because it was like home. I have another question. So if they were to make a movie of Steve's book and they were to cast an actress to play you, Donette, who would you want it to be? And who, what actor would you want to play Steve? And am I saying Karen or Karen? I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. Karen, who would play Karen? He's really interesting too, if you get a chance to, if you want to do this whole thing again and talk to her, she's old. (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) I feel like like I'd be a stalker at that point, but yeah, we would love to do this. Talk to all of Steve's exes. (laughs) That's pretty good. But um, yeah, I think maybe Lady Gaga for her, you know, for Karen. Mm -hmm. Because she's blonde and, you know, real powerful personality. And just, I would really, because I would get to meet all these people, right? So I would get uh, to meet Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and same thing with Benedict Cumberbatch, because that guy is so funny. I would love to meet him. So he would be Steve. And then for <laughs> me, I think I would, I would hope that some completely unknown uh, actress who's never had a good thing happen to her in her whole life. And she lands this role out of nowhere and it's this magical thing. And it could be for her what- what That's a great answer. (laughs) An ingenue, oh my God. Aw, so sweet. I love that. (laughs) Ashley, do you have any other questions? I know you sent us some questions. Um, Yeah, hold on, my dog's in. Okay. Um, (laughs) So at one point in the book, uh, Steve described you as slightly tired and vulnerable, like Mar- Marilyn Monroe. I don't know why that like just sunk with me. It just did. But um, and that was like slightly after meeting you. But how would you describe him soon after meeting him? Yeah, uh, he was he was very suspicious. I thought when I first met him, he was wondering what your angle is all the time and. Then uh, quickly after that, uh, after he became comfortable with me, then I realized what an agile mind he had and how quick he, he was. And, and then uh, after that, uh, realized he, he, how, how competitive really he was. Uh, how uh, big an element of his personality. So, yeah. Uh, oh, and just what a good looking guy. Jeez, you know, <laughs> have you seen the guy? <laughs> that was With like, you on that one. Oh, right on that. <laughs> Clearly, yeah. <laughs> Aw, that's sweet. Anyone else have any other questions? I think, I think we I have a question. Yeah. I want to know if Jeanette ever um, thought about writing a book about her life. As oh, a, I have thought of it. As I've an had... 80s icon, band icon. <laughs> <laughs> You're very kind to say I'm an icon. Um, I would really love to write a book. I've been thinking about doing that. The next years. book club. <laughs> I enjoy writing, but I haven't. Uh, my friend Ron, who was thinking about coming tonight, he is back. Um, yeah, he he's been encouraging me to write stuff. And I've written a few things, too on Facebook that I've posted, but, um, but yeah, I think I'll, maybe I'll try. I'll, there you go. <laughs> maybe I'll give you guys some advanced. Yeah, let us know. Yeah, we'll let buy it. it. No, yeah. We need another book. We'll yeah. Organize a whole thing around it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. Do you have any other questions, Randy? Yeah, Donette, I wanted to ask you, just talk a little bit about Canada. I've never been to Western Canada. Uh, being in Pittsburgh, it's real easy for me to get up to Niagara Falls and Toronto, and I've spent a lot of time there. And I've, I've, I'm born and raised in Pittsburgh. I've lived here all my life. But if I could move anywhere, I would probably move to Canada. So I was interested to talk with you. Uh, the folks that are on here might not know uh, about you becoming a Canadian citizen, and just you know, just want to know what what life is like for you there in Canada because it seems like such a friendly, easygoing, wonderful place. It's maybe it's just magic in my mind, but the time that I've spent there has has been on the magical side. Yeah, I love Canada. Uh, I never really 
In fact, Corin referred to me as Miss America because <laughs> <laughs> I was this American woman and I lived all over America in the South, in California, Colorado, uh, the Southwest in New Mexico. I've lived all, I'm born in Pennsylvania, of course, you know, and been back there sometimes. But uh, so I, I grew up all over the United States and I love the United States. But um, so I never really thought of moving to Canada, uh, but my husband got a job here. And so I came up with him and it's just wonderful. I love it. Um, I, I love the health care. Uh, it gives people a different kind of attitude to have uh, universal health care, I think. Um, they're not so fearful. And, and there's also this tendency in Canada to, to okay, so here's the ultimate Canadian story. Um, I was stuck in the snow with my car and tried to push it out, you know, get out and push. And it took like literally one minute for some people to stop, get out of their car, push me out. I mean, it was like three different carloads of people stopped to help push me out. And I think maybe that's part of why Canada is like that, because it's such a harsh environment here in some places that you have to be communally oriented in order to survive. So, um, you know, I started doing it too. I, I mean, that was a huge impact on me. So when, whenever I see somebody stuck in the snow, which is in Canada happens a lot, I stop, I get out, I push, you know, everybody does it and it just gives you a whole different attitude toward uh, other people and, and the world. And it's wonderful. I love it. Yeah. Uh, but I love it wherever I am. I'm going back to Nebraska soon and I'll be living there and, uh, you know, there are fireflies there and bats and foxes in the street. And I love Nebraska too. So wherever it is I am, I, I'm happy. Oh, in interesting. If I can ask, we're in Nebraska. I'm just Lincoln. asking because I've I've been de I've dealt with bands from Nebraska uh, for the last twenty some years, and it's a, it's a great place. I, I've spent oh, yeah. a fair amount of time there. I, it's a wonderful place. I love it. Yeah, I mean, it's Lincoln, Lincoln, Nebraska. Oh, right okay, in yeah. Capital. And uh, yeah, there's a pretty decent live music scene there. Um, that was one of the reasons that I wanted to move there when my husband got a job there. Uh, you know, I'd been there on tour with Game Theory and the story there is that everywhere we went, we had the rider where it was like, since I was a vegetarian, Sorry. thanks to Steve. <laughs> By the way, the reason and that oh, was- no, I, I just said it because I thought it was- The one of the things I wanted to correct and he said that he just became a vegetarian because, uh, he forgot what he told me, which is he was working at this job where there was a, a picture of a cow and it was all cut up into its like sirloin and whatever. And, uh, and he thought that it was just terrible that a, a, a creature could be broken down into its component parts that, uh, and be nothing more than that. So he became a vegetarian at that point. But, but anyway, um, yes. Yeah, so on our rider, it was uh, only... Uh, vegetarian something pizza and so everywhere we went we got pizza every single place and it was <laughs> night after night after night of pizza and but when we went to Lincoln they served us this wonderful uh full course meal with like home cooking and the Dorothy whatever uh salad dressing you know I don't know if you there's some kind of special Nebraska salad dressing. <laughs> and it was, it was great. It was like, I really, uh, I really liked the people. And uh, a lot of the people on Facebook are from there. Charles Lurians, he's from Nebraska. That's right. Thomas Ivy, I think. So lots of, lots of fun people from Nebraska. And uh, yeah, I love it there. Oh, that, that's great. I didn't know about the Nebraska angle. Yeah. Um, Oh, that, it's it's again it's it's a really wonderful place and i'm not surprised to hear that they treated you well in terms of vegetarian meals because they really every did. time i've been out there and i'm hanging out with friends i'm not a vegetarian but most of them are <laughs> and boy it's just like they always know the best places to go uh, oh. you know? so oh that's great yeah 
Yeah, uh -huh. and then there was other one more clarification that I wanted to make in the book. <laughs> well, you know the part where I'm chasing down the homeless guy and trying to take back the ten dollars. <laughs> okay, that was not because I was insane, right? <laughs> the guy, the guy, Steve gave him ten dollars, and and then uh, the guy's like, "What do you, what do you think you're buying here? I'm not for sale and stuff like that. I'm not your bitch or something." <laughs> so I was like, "Well, you can't have that money then. I'm gonna go get." <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what happened, but I don't even remember that incident. But uh, you know, you, you can say thank you, and then it's fine. But you know, if you're gonna do that kind of thing, yeah, well, no, you can't have his money. I'm gonna get it. I'll take it. I deserve it more than you do. <laughs> Aww, you're a feisty little one, aren't you? That's what I thought when I read it. Boy, she's feisty. Um, any other questions, anyone? Ashley? No, 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 she pretty much answered all mine. Oh, okay. So there was a part near, well, I guess it's closer to the end of the book after you've broken up with Steve and he goes to rehab and you showed up with some books for him. Do you remember what books you brought him? I don't, mm -hmm. I don't. It, uh, it was probably some kind of Buddhism and, you know, I think he said that I brought him some books about, oh, yeah, when I, when I was talking to him in, uh, when he was still living in Australia, he had watched the Mahabharata or something like that. So I think that I might have given him some books on Eastern religion, but I really, I don't remember. It was like, books are the main thing for me. If I'm feeling low, then I jump into a book. And so... That's what I figured I the best thing that I could do for him. He, poor guy, he was really, ha that was a terrible situation for him because I think that the record company insisted that he go into rehab. And so he had to do what the record company said. It was a choice between sort of his pride or his career. And so he went, but he really hated being there, and, you know. I don't even know if it worked for him. Eventually it did. Something did work for him. Thank goodness. He was able to get over it. Few people do. Yeah, I think he, I think he mentions in the book that he says, like, one day I woke up and I didn't I didn't want to do it anymore. That that's how he that's the story he tells, I think. He doesn't say anything more specific than that. After like 10 years, he's like, Oh, one day I woke up and that was kind of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. <laughs> yeah, whatever, whatever it takes. Well, does anyone else have anything? We've, we've had beans, an hour of the, done it. beans time. on toast, right? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, yeah. So it yeah, was, okay. it, was it actually, I mean, like it was just baked beans. I mean, <laughs> just baked beans and toast. There's no That's special. That's literally ingredient. what it is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you open up the can, you pour it into a pan, Dump them on a piece of Wonder Bread that's been. Oh over. my gosh! <laughs> Wonder Bread. I'm intrigued. <laughs> I'm intrigued. Is there any butter on the bread? Or does it get soggy? I know. Maybe well, there's butter. I can't remember whether you. I'm gonna say there had to be butter on the bread too. And something else besides just beans and bread, right? It's like an open <laughs> face sandwich. Like when we have an open face turkey sandwich or, or something. something yes. Yeah. Or did you fold yeah. it half and the beans were in the middle? I don't remember there being butter. But no. <laughs> maybe there was. I just so thought they had to be spectacular for his bread. mom to lure him home with these yeah. sandwiches, with the thought of the bean <laughs> sandwiches. I know. I tried it though, and it's actually really good. Oh, you know, really? What do you think? It sounds so simple, but it's really not. It's really not bad. So. I will be. I will be trying it. I would try it. I would definitely try. Oh, it. I would. I would try it. Aww. I would try it. Well, does anyone else have any other questions or comments? Or? Just know, Donetta, if you're ever in our neck of the woods, you are welcome at the Rusty Rail anytime. Oh. We would all love to come hang out with you and just visit. I would love that. Yeah, that would be, would be awesome. so much fun. We would, love, yeah. we would love to meet you. You're so well, cool. Oh, well, you guys are really cool too. And I just can't thank you enough for... 
identifying me and finding me and reaching out. Aww. Well, and let us know when you write your book. Yes, I let us know when you write your book. Yep. <laughs> Aww. Well, thanks a million, you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Yeah, Lloyd, to... I could say, is Lloyd, um, next Lloyd is back. <laughs> back. I was here. Okay. Oh. Hi, Rand. Listen here. Linda, thank you. <laughs> oh, you're so welcome. Thanks. So welcome. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Linda. Oh, you're so welcome. Stuff. We are record. We did record it. So I guess if anyone missed it and they'd like to, I don't know what we'll do. Maybe post it on Facebook or something or send it to them. Thank you again, Donna. Everybody stay safe. Thank you. Bye. 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 Nice meeting everybody. Yeah, nice meeting Bye. you. Great Bye. to spend the time with you. Thank you all. Thank, thank you. you. All right, take good care. See you guys later.